One month before the second years disappeared to study for boards, Linda and Brian awkwardly walked around campus with a microphone and a camera. Only a few brave souls dared face the spotlight. This is what they had to say. I, I, to be honest with you, I, I think the most memorable thing about your class is uh, just how smart you guys were. Uh, uh, this is 2013? No, 14. Uh, right. Same thing. Just how smart and intelligent you were. Um, always there, always participating. You know, I sat in the back for every lecture. Nobody was on Facebook. Nobody was on ESPN. And nobody was checking their stock portfolio. Everybody was just, you know, they had their mindset focused and they were honed in on endocrine and hormone relationships all day, every day, and it just made it an absolute pleasure to, uh, to teach each and every one of you individually in that matter. But I mean, we really had a great time, and the culmination was this skit. I think Arezzo could have been portrayed as fatter and more disheveled, but I think Matt really nailed me, and I congratulate him. So what was your favorite moment of first year? My favorite moment first year was when uh, the pathology guy was giving his lecture, the criminal forensics guy, and uh, I correctly identified the claw hammer as the murder weapon uh, on some slide of a guy with his head bashed in. For me, the best part of first and second year was being able to choose my anatomy lab partner, which was Anne, so that was fun. And also to be able to use rib cutters and saws to saw bones in anatomy, because I love bones. <laughs> No, wait, that's weird. <laughs> we should cut that out. <laughs> Probably when I accidentally swabbed Rohan with strep and realized I was still going to be a doctor one day. <laughs> uh, maybe the high school dance, like boogieing down like that. Uh, some good memories, good punch. The day after boards. That hasn't happened yet. The prom was really fun just to see people all dressed up and have fun after our exams and everything. So it was it was a good memory of high school and when we were all carefree. I love the Bryan Park event. I love the formal. I think the school, it was a great thing that the school funded it. We had a lot of fun and I think there was like a lot of mixing of the classes. I really enjoyed it. Favorite moment? Favorite moment. I would have to say uh, first year when we finished anatomy and uh, what, is, what did we take with it? MCFM. That was the best feeling, because after that first year it was just a lot of you know relaxation and enjoying ourselves after stressing out so much. Yeah, I mean I, I agree with Key, but I would like to add that moving in with Key would be one of my favorite times the first year. Second year ICM is you know seeing patients with a little bit of clinical knowledge off the cuff is. There were a couple of skit nights that were fun too. Definitely the boat cruise this year, and that would be because. We all knew each other already, all of the uh, second years and I, they're already on there, and just kind of let loose, had a good time. I would have to say around the world, probably. What about you? I would say uh, my favorite part of first or second year has been watching Costa grow into the man that he is now. <laughs> Which is hardly a man, but... <laughs> the day I started chemo, when I got, I sent an email out the night before, and. Everyone had some way of showing that, showing me that they were they were supporting me, and I, the peer group is just unparalleled. I mean, I couldn't have been in a better place. Is there anything you particularly look forward to during third and fourth year? I'm excited to be on the wards and work with patients. Figuring out what I want to do, I look forward to that because I thought I knew when I came here and I, I don't have an idea now. So I'd like to figure it out just so I can have something to look forward to. I'm excited about seeing the patient and like being able to apply what we learned. And I think just making, being more connected to the community. I think like seeing patients, it'll take us out of Einstein more than it normally does. And I don't know, I'll feel more connected to the Bronx and I, I'm looking forward to that. I'm just looking forward to a, the page turning, a, a change of environment. I cannot sit and watch PowerPoints anymore. I am, I can't do that. I will go anywhere. I will dig salt, but I can't do PowerPoints anymore. Pretending like I'm a doctor. <laughs> That's why else did we come here? Not living in a library anymore. That would be nice. Um, yeah, balagay on the wards all the time. That'd be great. Seeing patients. So saving, it's all about. saving lives. Definitely. Yeah. Patients. Patience. And good mentors. Graduation. And a salary. Actually getting out of the classroom and talking to patients a lot more and 
sort of being involved in the process of medicine, which I feel like, you know, the classroom sort of the uh, distant location from what actually happens in the hospital and in, me and in medical practice and that kind of thing. I'm definitely looking forward to ha not having class every day. I know there's lectures once a week or whatever, depending on the rotation, but it'll be nice not to have to, have to go to class. I'm definitely yeah. not looking forward to getting up really early, though. Actually being able to talk to people during the day rather than sitting in a library, I'm really excited about that. I guess learning more things about myself, overcoming obstacles, becoming a stronger person. Uh, why did you bring your talents to the Bronx? Why did I bring my talents to the Bronx? <laughs> A really strong intramural basketball program, um, beautiful facilities, Lubin dining. So I heard a lot about this place Gleason's, it, like back in Pittsburgh, like a lot of news from it. So I was like, I want to check this out, you know, and that was probably the number one deciding factor, definitely. So for me, it was more about being close to my family and like being able to visit them, like go home every other week, get to see them. So I like being close. <laughs> Uh, it was greener than the other places I interviewed. You know, I think picking the med school is kind of like a dating game. You know, you got to see what works, what fits, first impressions, you know. And my first impression of Einstein was really great, and Einstein had a great impression on me. So, you know, we kind of hit the ground running real quick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Chris Bosch, Dwayne Wade, specifically. I'm also a big fan of uh, the campus feel that they have here, you know, like it's yeah. kind of like this enclosed community, it's a little bubble in the Bronx, it just feels nice, you know, as opposed to being at like NYU or one of the city schools, you're just like in this like, you know, jungle of buildings, but here it's just like, you know, a nice little pocket of the Bronx and like we have our community. Who in our class would you trust being your position? <laughs> Ooh, that's... That's a tough question. <laughs> For what procedure or treatment? Just Jason Leung, I think. Yeah. Jason Leung. Because he pretty much already is a doctor. Chris. Which one? Boudin. Definitely. Probably maybe a Chris Bodwin. He's a, he's a cool guy, chill. He's got a lot of perspective. He knows a lot, so I think he'd be good. I don't think there's anyone, uh, I don't know if there's anyone I wouldn't trust other than Matt Klein. <laughs> I would trust Caitlin. Oh, Scott Roberts. Definitely Scott Roberts. Scott Roberts, easy, of course. Scott Roberts, Scott Roberts. Sarah Milberg. I don't trust any of my classmates to be my physician. I would be my own physician. I would do pretty much everything on me, with the exception of certain more intimate exams, which I would trust Nick Healy for. Uh, I guess my roommate, Becky, because she's the hardest person, hardest working person that I know. Caroline, look at her glasses. Sahar. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, Dale Hodge. I mean, he's the man. He knows stuff, and he's unstoppable, and he's cool. That's who I'd want to go see. If you could be any disease, what would you be and why? <sighs> That's a good question. I don't know, I kind of like the pinworms. I don't know why. It's just the, the cum that comes out at night, you know, symptoms. So probably that, yeah. I associate myself with that most. I'd probably be Giardia. But why is that? Because they always seem so happy. I would be so many, actually, to kind of think of it. I guess I would be a tick because they're free-spirited and they run around and they bite people's legs. I would probably be oral candidiasis because it's an opportunistic infection and I'm an individual who likes to take uh, uh, their opportunities to the max and uh, it is generally curable with uh, some antifungals. And then I would also be delatum because I like fish. Strangulites? No. It's a great name. I, like the, I, I just like the name of the strangulites. Sounds great. You know, you can get in pretty fast and easy. You just bite in, you know, and you're there forever. And auto infection is great. I mean, it's a good lifestyle. I would be Babesia because why not? I like Paragonomyces. I thought that was a pretty, I think it's a pretty cool name and a pretty funny story how you get it. I think I'd be Strongaloides 
because Dr. Quill loves Strongoloidy, so I'd have her love forever. Plus, you know, it never goes away, you know? I'd be, like, immortal. I like Shisto because it would be fun to swim in Lake Victoria. I would be malaria because I've always wanted to go to Africa. Anasakis, uh, the big worm that lives 30 years because it's got the longest run. Uh, Klebsiella, hands down. Um, I don't know, it seems mucoid. God, that was lame. <laughs> I guess I would also want to be Chagas because I like the heart. I'd probably be Pseudomonas because I really, really like that grape smell. <laughs> it smells great. I like Anasakiasis, I'm a sushi fan. Mmm. Yersinia pestis. Because it's pretty badass with the, the plague and all that. Probably Coxioides. Just cause like I mean it comes out more in earthquakes. So like you get hit with an earthquake and then you get hit with a double whammy of coxy, so you know, double the trouble. I guess it would be a new type of parasite actually called the SAM. And the SAM would essentially only target people I find annoying when I'm driving. I really enjoy looking at Girardia because he's always looking back at you. So I think I would be a Girardia. Peeping Tom kind of thing. Chagas. <laughs> I don't know, I just like the way it sounds. People know that. Because <laughs> Chagas. <laughs> Shisto because it's Dr. Coyle's favorite and I love Dr. Coyle. Staphylococcus aureus. <laughs> and why would I be Staphylococcus aureus? Because, I don't know, I think they're just kind of interesting. They have that nice sort of uh, grape cluster shape. Uh, it's MRSA. And it's a super bug, so you get to fly like a super bug. <laughs> Which one do you think has the most fun? Can you guys uh, name uh, all the Jewish holidays for us? You know who you're talking to right now? <clears throat> of course I can. You want me to go in order? ABC order or chronological? Uh, lunar calendar order. What do you want? This one is like should say Camagin. <laughs> um, Hanukkah. Oh, I can also go with the uh, the English or the Hebrew versions of the name. Yeah, what, do what, you, what are you looking for here? Like Shemini Atzeret, Shem uh, Simchat Torah, right? Is that how you say it? <laughs> we have uh, October. October. We start like that. Shemini Atzeret. Simcha Torahs. Uh, yeah. Yeah, what else we got? There's Rosh Hashanah, one of the four day holidays we know. <laughs> There's Hanukkah, or Hanukkah. Rosh Hashanah. There's like a big one, yeah. Yom Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur. There's another Pesach, one. Pesach, yeah. Sukkoth, um, Rosh Hashanah, Passover. Nope. <laughs> oh, you're good. <laughs> um, Shim Hazarat. I'm I'm drawing blanks here. Yeah. What's that one where you oh, dress yeah, up? Yeah. Purim. Oh, oh, Purim, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, then there's that one in June that's like really random. I've never heard of it before. Oh, Sukkot. There's yeah. Sukkot too. Yeah, uh, Sukkot. Um, uh, most of September. There's the one where there was dancing in the courtyard. Do you remember the, the uh... Sukkot. Is that Sukkot? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, that one. Yeah. May. Or like May. June. Oh, yeah. Someone's like, if they celebrate that holiday, that's crazy. You know they're like full on Jews if that happens. Orthodox, yeah. yeah. So uh what's that one called? I can't remember, so I guess uh I guess I failed. <laughs> we got a lot of them, I mean, you know. Thank you for a great first two years of medical school. I definitely had a lot of fun putting this together. I'm sad I won't be joining you next year, but I look forward to your wonderful stories and all your advice. Congratulations again, and good luck. On behalf of the MSTP class of 2018, we wanted to congratulate the class of 2014 on finishing the first half of medical school. Uh, though we would like to be able to join you in the awards, we won't be able to. We'll be starting our lab rotations. But we want to say that we'll miss you, and we wish you the best of luck on the awards. We know you'll do great.